Hello and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to cover something that's a bit of a hot topic at the moment which is electric vehicle charging points. Now I'm not fully installing this, um, ideally you need someone that can test it uh, and commission correctly so um, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to install probably 90% of it. So I'll cover the install uh, when I do it. I'm not really going to make it a how-to. The instructions are very good. Um, but what I wanted to do with this video is kind of cover some of the key points um, and certainly why I picked this specific charger um, for the car that I'm getting, our house, uh, and some of the key points that and criteria that you need in your house before um, picking your charger, but also understanding um, what you're going to be paying because not always um, is it a simple sort of installation so that's what we're going to do in this video what I'll do now is get this unboxed show you what we've got explain a bit about the unit I've picked um, and then and why I've picked it and then I'll get it installed um, majority it won't be working at this point um, but I'll talk you through who I've picked to test and commission this and also a few lessons learned on sort of the pricing strategy and what I would expect to pay for what work is being done on this because I could have very easily been stumped uh, to be paying double what I needed to. So I'll explain that in this video. So let's get it unboxed and uh, I'll show you what I've got. So what we've got here is an Anderson A2 seven kilowatt charger. Now I believe this is seven kilowatt or 22, um, but 22 kilowatt you generally need a three phase supply, um, which domestic properties I believe don't really have that. So for a normal domestic, you're probably looking at a seven kilowatt charger. So that's what we've got here. Now the Anderson A2 is pretty unique, I think, compared to every other on the, U on the market. Um, and I've looked at various um, chargers that suited what I wanted. Now my key points were, I wanted a tethered cord. So a tethered cord means that the charging cable is permanently fixed to the charger. And it's just a case when you arrive home, you plug the, uh, the car in uh, from the unit and you don't have to use the car's uh, cables. However, I didn't want the cable on show, which the Zappi is probably the next best uh, for that. And then every other one I looked at, it just had cables dangling. And that's not what I wanted specifically for where we're gonna put this in between our uh, two garage doors. Um, cables potentially gonna get snagged on things when you're um, uh, taking things in and out of the garage. So for me, the key point was a hidden cable, but was attached to the unit and a tethered one. Now, what the Anderson has is these brushes, which cleans the cable every time you wrap it around. Now, I believe the cable wraps around this eventually, uh, and we'll get to that a, a bit later on. So just to touch on the cable, it comes with, um, I believe it's a Type 2 cable, which fits most EV cars, and then it obviously attaches in there and comes with the gland. Now, I've gone for an 8.5 metre cable. Reason being, our drive is about 8 metres, and I wanted the ability to kind of not be strict with where I have to park my car. Um, so I'd be able to park the car as far away from the charger and still be able to pretty much plug in. Yes, you're gonna have a bit of restriction, but that's why I went for the eight and a half. Now that did cost more um, off the top of my head. I can't remember how much. I think it was about 85 pounds more than uh, the six meter one. Um, but it's one of them things you've got it you've got the ability to to adjust uh, and do what you want so the next thing with anderson is kind of the the fascias now this is the in my opinion the best looking charger out there and you get a choice of what combination of colors now originally i was going to stick i've gone gray as you can see which will match our front door and our incoming garage doors so currently we've got white old tatty garage doors um, which are, I've got it booked in here and the garage doors are being replaced with anthracite grey. Very similar colour to this, even though this is called nearly black. So you get a choice. You've got creams, um, black, uh, a lighter grey, I think you can do green. And then that is all your surrounds which go round the edge. So that's that bit. And then the front, 
comes you have this plate which sits on the front like that now as you can see i've gone for a normal steel um nearly black just to match in with everything else now you can have various colors of wood which look good and that's what we're going to go for um, but we decided against it to stick with this and then you can have any combination of colors between the two and in my opinion it looks absolutely brilliant so that's kind of why i went for this unit um, i think it's aesthetically the best and then you've still got your hidden cable now a few little accessories you can pick uh, to go with this and it's a bit of an exercise i ran is i've gone for the adaptive fuse option and what this does is it monitors the current or the loading um, on your supply uh, to the house obviously a car is going to require a lot of load um, to charge so i decided because of the size of the house um, and i kind of appreciate that we've got quite a few appliances um, that are electrical that are in induction hob two ovens dishwasher and so on that at times on an evening we're probably going to be shoving that load up and rather than risk tripping the electrics this will monitor and reduce the charging output of the charger now that was a hundred pound option but i think it's worthwhile um, and just in case now we will touch on it a little bit but our house is a, a 100 amp supply and um, this is fed on a 40 amp circuit and um, the when I did a rough uh, loading assessment on the house I turned every appliance on and we didn't go over 49 amps but I just felt that this is worthwhile because the last thing you want is put your charge on over, charger on overnight or your car on charge overnight uh, and then for whatever reason your electrics have uh, tripped because of the charger so yes there's protection built in um, but I thought that were a worthwhile little addition to go for now the other addition you can have uh, which I haven't chosen is some solar uh, to have this connected to solar panels and the like I don't know much information on it because I haven't got it myself but it is an option you can have on this now another key bit of point about this charger is the pen fault detection uh, unit that's built into this um, again I don't know loads on it but I know it was a key point of you would have to have a separate module uh, device um, if it isn't built in already and I believe that avoids the need to do an additional earth rod which again is an additional installation cost to you um, if, if it's needed with the unit so this has got it all built in as it has the Zappi I believe um, and a few other units uh, which avoids the need for an additional earth rod uh, for the house again it might be a bit too technical for what i want this video to be but it's just a consideration and something to do a bit of research on uh, and there is other youtube videos that kind of detail that in more now the other thing i liked about this unit it's got a lockable magnetic case so you wrap your charger around place the the uh, module in the, uh, the charging port in there close the lid and then that can uh, can be locked i believe through the app now it does have a uh, app interface and it will connect wirelessly uh, to the router now in my last video you'll actually see i've rejigged all my uh, home wi-fi coverage to ensure that things like this are covered so the router is placed directly above this uh, and we'll be good to go and we can monitor the charging uh, and I think we can set a schedule of, of what we're doing so yeah now the car I've gone for is a BMW iX3 um, it's coming in a couple of months so I'm keen to get this done and installed now now a point on that is I've gone for the OZEV uh, home installation grant which gives you £350 towards the installation. Now I'll touch on what I expect I would pay, uh, uh, sorry, a uh, later point in this video, uh, but initially the problems I had was the car wasn't on the OZEV list until literally last week um, before this video went live, so I've not been able to do anything with this, and uh, Anderson, who I've picked to install, uh, can't install it until and get the grant until the car is on the list so if you've ordered a sort of a new EV um, that's new to the market then you may just have to keep monitoring and see when it comes on to the OZ EV list so yeah that's this unit 
let's get outside, get it installed. Uh, I'll show it you installed and I'll touch on a few points once it is installed on uh, considerations in the electric meter box that I had to do and also in the uh, consumer unit and just a few points that a consideration that I had to uh, sort of give to Anderson to do their assessment. So let's get it installed and then we'll talk about the pricing and how I nearly got stunk uh, with the pricing. So let's get outside, get it done. <laughs> There we have it, the Anderson is installed. So we've gone for nearly black. And as you can see, it sits nicely on the centre post. And then we are having new garage doors, um, which are gonna be the same colour as the front door. And uh, so it'll all match nicely. Now, just a couple of features. So this slides onto the front of the main back that you've, you'll have seen in the video. And then we have this pouch. Now, we're not connected up or anything yet because we're waiting for Anderson to come and do that. But this lights up in here. And then it's also a magnetic lock. Um, so you uh, you can't open this and you can lock it on the app and uh, all good. Now, the cable then runs around here. And you've got the brushes that um, clean off any dirt and what have you to to clean it up so that's the uh, the car charger in and uh, ready to go so what i've done with ours is i've installed the cable uh, and the cat 5 cable or cat 6 i've actually ran uh, that's shielded from the unit to the um the meter box outside and then the cable from here to the consumer unit. Now, reason being, and we'll get on the subject in a bit, is I didn't want cables clipped around the house. So I ran them into the garage. Now, the key being meeting regulations. So I've looked this up, I've took advice from electricians of best way to run this. So I've ran this and I've agreed with Anderson that I'll show the installer how I've ran it to make sure it does meet uh, regulations. So that's what I've done, um, which is why you've seen me mount the unit. Now, a few comments on the unit itself is getting these to line up was a bit of a nightmare. Now, this is actually much better than it was because I've had to pack it out. Now, this is no fault of Anderson's, but obviously we're on stone. It's the most uneven surface you can. So I angle grind, as you can see there, this flat and then packed out. So the unit's actually level and it actually made these better. So that's what I did there. So apart from that, very easy to install and doesn't warrant some of the prices people uh, charge. So yeah, what we'll do is we'll get in the meter box and I'll just talk you through a few points uh, and considerations I had to, had, uh, had to do um, with Anderson, just to show them uh, what we're working with and whether my equipment is suitable to take the charger and whether there were any hardware upgra upgrades that were needed um, before we got this commission. So. Um, I'll go to the meter box and talk you through it. So in the meter box, there were a few considerations. One that was we had a 100 amp uh, fuse and supply and then 25 mil, I think it was. And then the other thing was the earthing and what type of earthing system we have uh, at the house. So um, yeah, just send them photos and they'll be able to deal with all that uh, and sort it out. Now the Cat 5 or Cat 6 even, um, that's coiled up there. That's for the adaptive fuse addition that we paid for. Current clamp will go around the tails um, and allow the, the car charging unit to monitor sort of the current loading on the house. And then we'll just sit in there. This will be put back and then that'll take the information back to the unit to, um, to sort of tell it what demand it can give the car uh, for charging. So 
all you need to do is send photos to Anderson and they'll have a look into that uh, and let you know how it is now. A simple install. Um, I was looking around £400 is, is the general quote. Now, I'm just going to head inside and I'll talk you through the pricing that I had from some installers. So, for me to have this installed, cable clipped wherever it needs to be, the additions in the consumer unit, um, the installation cost coming at um, £400 pretty much on the dot, I think it was. Now, we, I'm going for the grant because I've got a car on order. Um, the government will give me £350 towards that, meaning the install is actually £50. Now, I didn't mind running all the cables. Um, I want them neat, so uh, cost of £50 to test and commission this um, and, and take the grant and, and do that. So that was £400. Now, for this exact unit, from a very well-known social media installer who I thought I would give the benefit of the doubt. I've seen the work, I, I thought, yeah, let's go for it. Um, they quoted, it was £2,100 for the unit and installation. I've paid £1,230 for this. Um, and I can't even remember if that includes the adaptive fuse either. Um, but ultimately, they wanted £800. And then I since found out that that work would probably be subbed out to someone more local. Pretty disgusting, um, but it is what it is. Now, some situations, I've got a consumer unit in the garage, the supply is easy to get to here, meaning the price is low. If you've got to upgrade your feed, um, you've got to, that's a cost to consider. If you've got to run cables um, that are buried or you know through need civils work, it's another cost. So what can seem like a simple job can turn into a mammoth task of, um, of an installation. I'm just fortunate that our house is pretty new. Um, it's only 12 years old, so it's pretty up to, uh, to reasonable standards. When I was looking into other chargers, um, I was looking at the Zappi, and um, that was going to be my next go-to again. That unit is cheaper than this, about, I think it was £800 um, I was quoted for, and the installation prices were pretty much identical, so £400. So, from an installer point of view, I would say you're looking about £400 for a pull. Consumer unit, cable to here, install the unit, test and commission, about £400, unless you need more work. So, that's where I'm at, and I just wanted to share where I was probably nearly stung. Um, by one installer taking advantage of their social media presence uh, and wanting to charge extortionate amount for no better work, especially if it's been subbed out. So that's that. That's the Anderson. It's all installed, ready to be commissioned in a few weeks and then ready for my new car to arrive. Uh, and yeah, looking forward to it. So hope you found this video useful um, and hope it's uh, got some beneficial information in there of uh, what to go for. I'm not saying Anderson is the best charger, I just think it looks the best and um, I'm quite conscious of aesthetics so that's why I went for this and we're willing to pay the bit extra. So I hope you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up if you have and please make sure you subscribe for more videos to come in the future and if you haven't already please check out Instagram the underscore DIY underscore journey for more day to day updates on the whole house uh, development and how we're getting on so thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one, cheers.